Okay, we're over at the Atlas lathe and we're going to cut off a piece of 7 8 aluminum with our parting tool. And a couple things you want to watch now. Remember, you want to cut as close as you can to the chuck and because then the work is not going to uh, uh, flex or vibrate. Make sure that your compound uh, is not hanging over and that your gibs are tight because th that will move on you. As far as speed, I like to use about the same speed I would use, a spindle speed, for regular turning. Some people are told to use back gears or run it real slow and that's not really necessary. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not even going to use any uh, lubricant, on, lubricant on the uh, aluminum because this will cut real freely. Now on the other lathe I'm going to use power feeds but the power feed, uh, cross feed on the Atlas lathe runs way too fast. So I'm just going to feed this by hand and you'll see this will cut off uh, very nicely. I'm going to try to hand hold the uh, camera. This lathe is so loud and rattly. There we go. I'm just feeding it in as fast as I can. There we got it, and I know what you're saying. Well, sure, that's aluminum, that's nothing. So let's try a piece of steel. I failed to mention that it's absolutely necessary that your tool be on true dead center. Also, that your tool be set uh, perfectly perpendicular to the work, not at a slight angle. Here we go on, uh, this is half inch round steel. In here there's a lot more vibration, but it didn't take too long to cut that off. Let's move over to the ball. Closing lathe, 600 RPM, 3 quarter inch brass, power feed, a Laura's tool holder. Here we go. This is power feed now. I don't have a free hand to oil it, but I would like to put some oil on there. Closing lathe, 800 RPM, power feed, 7 eighths aluminum. Pretty slick, huh? Okay, now we'll get serious here. This is inch and a quarter steel. Uh, we're going at 500 RPM and the feed rate is six thousandths of an inch per revolution and that's the same feed I've been using uh, all along here and I'm going to use power feed and I'm going to drip oil on it continuously. I'm at my six inch bench grinder now and I'm going to uh, sharpen one of these. If it hasn't been broken off it doesn't take uh, much to sharpen, I'm just a few seconds and it's all right to let the curvature of the wheel remain because all we're interested in is about five degree clearance. Here we go and move it back and forth a little bit across the wheel 
and we're done already. I just touched that up a little bit. That's all there is to it for grinding these uh, cutoff tools. Make sure that the wide part of the tool is facing up toward the ceiling when you grind. I'm at the Atlas lathe now and I've got my Aloris type uh, tool post on here. It isn't a Aloris tool post but it's a Chinese tool holder here which is still pretty good. It's an eighth inch wide cutter which is norm a little wider than what I normally want to use. Five eighths cold roll steel, 600 RPM and I'm going to feed it uh, by hand and uh, make a note, a mental note to yourself, do not attempt to use a cutoff tool with hot roll steel. It is a nightmare. Do not cut hot roll steel. Take it to your bandsaw. Here we go. This is an eighth inch wide kerf now, so it's, the chips are wider. Notice I used plenty of oil. I'm back on the closing lathe now and I have my tool ground like this at an angle so that uh, the one piece will drop off and then we'll continue facing and it'll take the tit off of the stock that's still in the uh, chuck. I don't know if you can tell or not that uh, the tool is ground at an angle. Let's take that cut. This is 7 8 Aluminum. I can't put any oil on it because my hands are all occupied. Now watch the end piece drop off. And there's still a tip down there and I'll continue feeding in and that gets faced off. That's how the tools are always ground on turret lathes and automatic lathes.